Hello and welcome to the webinar on combining simulation and machine learning with AnyLogic and H2O.ai. My name is Arash Mahdavi and I'm your host today. Today we have two guest presenters from H2O.ai, Dr. Nikki Athanasiadu and Hemen Kapadia. Nikki Athanasiadu is a data scientist specializing in biomedical applications and working closely with companies in the healthcare industry, helping them to expand their capabilities using AI. Dr. Athanasiadu earned her PhD in molecular and cellular biology at the University of Edinburgh and has since worked on personalized medicine solutions and hospital systems applications at National Institutes of Health, the NYU School of Medicine, and the NYU Center of Systems Biology and current Institute of Mathematical Sciences. Heman Kapadia is a senior solution architect at H2O.ai with the customer success team. His primary focus is to provide technical solutions with integrating H2O.ai's products in various technology stacks. Additionally, he also works on implementing customer requested features to the driverless AI product. Heman completed his bachelor's in computer engineering from University of Mumbai. Okay, let's start the webinar. As you can see in the agenda, I will start the webinar with a very brief and high level introduction to simulation modeling and machine learning to establish a baseline for the later topics. I'll also be talking about the core differences between simulation modeling and machine learning and where each of these methods shine. Then through some use cases and example scenarios, I'll show how, when applied together, simulation modeling and machine learning can significantly enhance one another and open new doors to your workflow. Nikki will then introduce us to the H2O driverless AI platform and share lots of valuable insights from her years of experience with AI applications in the healthcare industry. Afterwards, Hemen will walk us through a multi-method AnyLogic model that he built to showcase the combined power of simulation and machine learning. Then Hemen will show how the H2O train ML model was incorporated into the hospital capacity model in a few easy steps, enabling you to replicate a similar process in your own models. At the end of our presentation, Nikki, Hemen, and I will be available live in the Q&A section to answer your questions. Before I start, I have to mention that there is definitely much more to the topics that I'll be talking about in the next two sections. The purpose here is to discuss the differences and synergies between simulation and machine learning in a succinct and easy to understand manner. To achieve some intuition about the topics, I had to simplify and summarize, which may blemish the accuracy to some extent. This is something to keep in mind if you decide to further explore these topics. Both simulation and machine learning help us to build models of the real world. A model is something that tries to approximate the real world and tell us how it works. The reason behind building models is that in most real scenarios, we cannot afford the time expenses or the dangers of experimenting with the real system. Through this approach, we are taken to the world of models in which all experiments can be performed in a risk-free fashion. I assume that majority of this webinar's audience have some level of familiarity with both simulation modeling and machine learning, but just in case, let's quickly review them. Machine learning is based on algorithms that are capable of extracting patterns from data. The extracted pattern is then used for different forms of predictions. There are many types of machine learning. As I'm showing in this chart, the main types are supervised learning, semi-supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. As a subfield of machine learning, reinforcement learning is vastly different from the other subtypes. While not in the scope of this webinar, AnyLogic is collaborating with Microsoft Project Banzai and Pathmind, two platforms that specialize in this topic. If you're interested in learning more about these topics, you can find more information from the AnyLogic website. Direct links will also be provided in the supplemental materials. 
In this webinar, when we are referring to machine learning, we are almost exclusively talking about supervised learning. This does not mean that semi-supervised learning or unsupervised learning cannot be used with simulation modeling. It is just that supervised learning inherently has more synergy with simulation modeling and is a better fit for more scenarios. In supervised learning, data is fed into the algorithm as a set of observations together with its outcome. The goal is to infer a function from the data and specifically the training data. Supervised learning can be further subdivided into regression analysis and classification analysis. Regression analysis is used to predict numerical values like demand, length of stay, and income. In contrast, classification analysis is used to predict categorical values such as state of the weather or fraudulent versus valid banking transactions. As you can see in this graph, there are many techniques and algorithms for each subtype of supervised learning. I want to draw your attention to the fact that neural networks, which are used in deep learning, is an available technique for both regression and classification. Everything that is categorized under supervised learning here is the main focus of this webinar and what we refer to whenever we are talking about machine learning. Later in this webinar, you will see that regardless of the technique being used for supervised learning, we can incorporate an H2O trained supervised model into the simulation to be used like a function. This can be used to either predict a numerical value or a certain class that the input belongs to. Now, let's take a look at simulation modeling and any logic. Simulation is a forecasting tool. It is used to see the impact of business decisions before implementing them. Compared to other tools, simulation handles time and causal dependencies. Therefore, it always explains why things happen. Simulation is the only way to predict under uncertainty, and simulation is also highly visual. You can communicate and convince with simulation. If you're joining us from the data science and machine learning world and are not familiar with simulation modeling or any logic, I suggest this webinar that discusses different aspects and application of simulation modeling. If you want to run an experiment with simulation models, I suggest checking out the AnyLogic cloud at cloud.anylogic.com. There, you will find a plenty of models that are categorized based on their application and industry. If you want to learn more about the impact of simulation modeling in different industries, I suggest checking out the presentations from previous AnyLogic conferences. These will show how AnyLogic users implemented simulation modeling to make significant decisions and improve their businesses. Now that we have a high level understanding of both machine learning and simulation modeling, let's take a look into some of the fundamental differences between the two approaches. Simulation modeling derives its predictive capability from the causal rules embedded into the model. The main steps of building a simulation model are to first identify the system components that should be modeled and then try to understand how these components behave in the actual system. To achieve this, the simulation modeler will work closely with the subject matter experts to uncover all the rules based on their expertise and intimate knowledge of the actual system. Therefore, at its core, the main task is to find all the relevant rules. Simulation models can also use data as inputs or to approximate some aspects of the model. When data is used as inputs, it's for aspects that are exogenous to the main focus of the model, such as arrival rates. Data can be used as approximation for components that are hard to model with the first principle, such as amount of time it takes for a forklift to move a pallet. Due to hidden or complex causal mechanisms, it is very common that these values have random variations and are thus represented in the model using probability distributions. In contrast, machine learning gains its power from stored information in past data. In building a machine learning model, the data scientist focuses on uncovering the patterns and correlations in the data. In most cases, uncovering these patterns does not require a focus or a study into the real system's operation. Now, let's take a look at pros of each method and where they shine. 
In machine learning, there is no need to uncover all the hidden drivers, interdependencies, and implicit rules of the real system. The outcome of these are present in the data. We can get fast and reliable predictive models when there is plenty of accessible, clean, labeled data. ML models can predict the future based on the patterns inferred from historical data. Platforms such as H2O driverless AI are automating many of the previously tedious tasks that were needed for successful application of ML. Simulation, on the other hand, is great in capturing the dynamics of the system and effects of stochasticity. In simulation modeling, the knowledge and expertise of SMEs help to uncover the rules and causal inference that govern the system. We can explore novel scenarios that historical data has not previously accounted for. Simulations can visualize the impact of business decisions before implementing them. With simulation, you can visually communicate and convince. Other experiments can be built on top of the simulations, such as optimization Monte Carlo, to make more informed decisions and gain better insights. As you can see, there are some unique qualities and capabilities to each approach. The source of knowledge in these two methods are fundamentally different, causation in simulation versus correlation in machine learning. Keeping this in mind, let's take a look at the opportunities for incorporating machine learning into simulation. As you will see, this will enable us to use the insights gained from the best of both worlds. To clarify some of the synergies and benefits from combining simulation modeling and machine learning, I'm going to discuss six use cases, three from the perspective of simulation modelers, two from the perspective of data scientists, and one from both. Keep in mind that the first five cases are fundamentally the same. In all of them, we are incorporating a trained ML model into a simulation. Depending on the specific use case and your own viewpoint, you might see some of these as being separate. Case 6 is different from the rest as it does not incorporate the ML model into simulation. Instead, output from a simulation model is used as training data for an ML model. Let's start with the cases from the simulation modeler's perspective. Case 1. Using ML models as an alternative for inputs in a simulation model. As I mentioned a little bit before, in the absence of direct access to the causal rules that govern a real system, some parameters or behaviors of the real system might need to be approximated. It is a well-established practice to use probability distributions in these cases. This is a mathematically rich topic that covers a variety of scenarios, from inputs that can be considered as univariate random variables to scenarios in which some of the random input variables together form a random vector with multivariate probability distributions. There is not enough time in this webinar for me to discuss the mathematical details of these scenarios, but I'll try to summarize them in a future white paper or blog post. Here I'm showing some of the fields in various blocks contained in the process modeling library that can be used for this purpose. For example, the time a resource spends in downtime could be set as the output of a regression-based machine learning model. In addition, a classification-based machine learning model could be used to set the blocking condition of a whole block. Another aspect that could easily be replaced with ML models and could be used in any simulation methodology, including system dynamics, is table functions. There are also many places in a state charts that could easily get their input from an ML model, such as their timeout before one state transitions to the next. Put briefly, what I'm showing on this slide is just a sample of all the low-hanging fruits for where you could use ML as inputs. Case 2, using ML models to approximate the behavior of components in the simulated system. This is somewhat a subset of what we described in the previous case, but it also relates to how you can add more fidelity to your simulation models. General purpose simulation tools such as AnyLogic are not intended for hardcore physical modeling. If incorporating physical components of a system is important to the logic of your simulation, you can approximate them with machine learning models. 
Say, for example, you were simulating a concrete factory using a combination of discrete event and agent-based modeling methods. As part of the process, modeling the inner temperature of each slab of concrete at any point of the process is important to the logic and outputs. In this case, you could use a supervised ML model that takes some inputs, such as the time spent in the autoclave, and returns the expected current temperature of the slab. Case 3, using deployed ML models in the simulated environment for a more accurate simulation. A simulation model should replicate the rules of a real system, a fact that also applies to any embedded AI solutions that already exist in the system. Rules and behaviors that are direct result of a system's embedded AI solutions should also be incorporated into the simulation. The most natural way of achieving this is to directly embed the AI solutions into the simulation. For example, if a call center has an automated system based on an ML model that assigns call to specific operators based on the call's estimated complexity, that ML model or a variation of it should be incorporated into the simulation model of the call center. Now let's review a couple of use cases from the perspective of data scientists and AI experts. Case 4, testing the impact of an AI solution on the system's overall performance before deployment. This is similar to the previous case, but from a different angle. The objective of adding AI components to a system is to improve overall system performance, not just of the specific component being substituted by AI. It is a reasonable expectation that deploying a well-trained AI solution will have a significant improvement on the overall performance of the target system. However, any perturbation in a system has the potential to shift any bottlenecks or cause other ripple effects on the system. Testing a trained model on its own does not verify that the performance of the modified system as a whole is significantly improved. Simulation models can be used as a virtual risk-free environment to test the implications of incorporating AI into existing systems. Case 5. Visualizing the math. Data scientists are familiar with the problem of showing and communicating the effect of their ML solutions to those who are not familiar with the nuances or implications of ML solutions, for example, customers, managers, or decision makers. One purpose that simulation modeling software has been developed for is to present a model's dynamic behavior in an appealing and realistic fashion. For this reason, it can be used to visually show the performance of a simulated environment both with and without an ML solution. Controls and other interactive components can be added to the environment, allowing any user to test different scenarios and see how the performance changes. Case 6 Simulation models outputs are used as training data for an ML model. There are two main reasons to do this. The first reason is that simulation is a great generator of clean, labeled, synthetic data. As simulation models capture the inherent rules of the real system, novel scenarios can be executed virtually. Being part of a computer program, the simulation is also not subject to sensor degradation or noisy outputs unless explicitly told to do so, and all parts of the system and sequence of events can be identified. The data outputted could then be used to enhance real datasets, test different ML algorithms, or use for proof of concepts ML models before the data in the real world can be made available. The second reason to use such a pipeline is to build an ML model that approximates a simulation model's output. The ML model can then be used as a lightweight approximation of a more complex, resource-intensive simulation model allowing to be directly deployed on edge devices that are specialized in running trained ML models. Now that we have established why we want to combine the predictive powers of simulation modeling and machine learning, we'll hear from Nikki, who will introduce us to the H2O.AI driverless AI platform and its capabilities. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. For the next few minutes, I will uh, introduce our company, H2O.AI, discuss how AI can help solve problems in healthcare in general, and then focus on hospital management optimization. I will then pass the mic to Hemen, 
who will go through the simulation demo. H2O.ai was founded in 2012. We are currently in Series D funding. Among our customers, we count almost half of Fortune 500 companies, 8 top 10 banks, 7 top 10 insurance companies, and 4 of the top 10 healthcare companies. We love our open source community, and our open source community loves us back. We are a truly global company with multiple offices in three continents. We have been named a visionary and leader in Gardner's Magic Coordinates for Data Science and Machine Learning Platforms for three consecutive years. Other recognitions and awards include, but are not limited to, the Forrester Wave Automation Solutions Award as well as the InfoWorld Technology of the Year Award. H2O.ai offers a comprehensive suite of solutions to the data science community. In this slide, I show you our, few, our full list of products. From algorithms and in-memory modeling software, to data engineering solutions and business support, driver, driverless AI is, of course, uh, our enterprise AutoML software platform, which powers the AI model at the heart of the simulation we discuss. Let's focus on driverless. Driverless AI is able to connect to a variety of data sources such as S3, HDFS, Azure Blob, BigQuery and JDBC and supports uh, most common data formats including uh, compressed archives and parquet files. Once the data are ingested, driverless AI uses a genetic algorithm to explore the model space and create a leaderboard based on model performance. In this iterative process, different models in the leaderboard comprise a different combination of optimized engineered features, algorithms and their hyperparameters. The best models from the leaderboard are then combined in a stacked ensemble which further boosts model performance and generalizability. Some of the algorithms uh, that can be packed with uh, driverless AI is XGBoost, like GBM, TensorFlow, BERT, and ImageNet models. Feature transformations uh, start from simple numeric interactions to complex target encoding schemes and text tokenization, among others see the feature transformation library including in included in driverless. It is important to note that the data scientist has the ability to modify and control the training process via various settings that determine how the model space is searched by the genetic algorithm and other details. I like to think of these knobs and expert settings as hyper hyper parameters to the driverless AI training process. Once the training process is complete, the model can then be exported from driverless AI with one click as an independent scoring object, a mojo we call them, that contains both the optimized feature transformation pipeline and the final model. The mojo is available as either a Java or a C++ runtime and supports both Python and R wrappers. Driverless AI performance was placed very high in Kaggle competitions where AutoML software was allowed to compete, reaching uh, top percentile points among thousands of competing data scientist teams. We talked about how driverless trains high performing models. I now want to give a bird's eye view of the driverless architecture. The driverless AI engine can be sitting anywhere, on-prem, remote and cloud, independently of where the data is. Data scientists have access via a client-server routine for easy and scalable experimentation, using user-friendly interfaces as well as Python and R client APIs. An extensible library of algorithms or recipes for ETL, feature engineering and image processing, which is not included in this slide, and NLP is available uh, within driver, but also, as we mentioned, is extensible with users' recipes. Deployment is made very easy 
by automatically generating scoring pipelines, as we can see in the top right corner, that support, among others, others in process and client server scoring via HTTP and TCP protocols. Both batch and low latency scoring pipelines are supported. If you are interested to find out more, visit our webpage at h2o.ai, download a trial of our software, or join our learning center, complete the courses and get badges and certification. Let's now shift gears and talk about AI models in healthcare. H2O has had a clear vision to transform healthcare with AI since the beginning. You can read here a quote from our CEO's early messages about the company. We are now eight years later, proud to be working with numerous healthcare companies, including four of the top ten as I mentioned, and help them solve a variety of problems that are representative of this diverse sector. In this slide, we see only a handful of the possible use cases. These use cases can vary from medical claim, from, the, from medical claim fraud detection to medical imaging, diagnostics, drug discovery or product, production monitoring. Here, we will focus on emergency room and hospital management. This is a use case that proved particularly important during the current pandemic. The exponentially increasing number of patients suffering from COVID-19 at critical condition has put to extreme tests hospitals and all over the country, and our customers and partners look to AI and ask for solutions. Both bed and personal protective equipment availability, of course, have been important resources to manage during the pandemic, as we all know. I offer here some figures to demonstrate the magnitude of the problem. Of course, the need for hospital management solution is not only relevant during the current pandemic. Pain points and inefficiencies in hospital management have long been identified. I offer here some numbers to demonstrate the potential return on investment for efficient optimization of these hospital management processes. So, how can driverless how, so how can a driverless model and the simulation help, help optimize hospital bed capacity for this use case the driverless ai model has been trained to predict hospital admission duration for each new patient based, based on their demographic and health characteristics to reach a business decision regarding bed management using that model the business user will need to wait for every new patient to arrive before the model can estimate their expecting length of stay and therefore hospital bed occupancy in the foreseeable future. Sometimes, the time afforded to reach a decision with this approach is sufficient. In cases where this is not true, simulations can significantly help. By creating and using simulated patient data instead of waiting for patients to arrive, we are now able to generate predictions well ahead of time and even crash test the system's capacity under different scenarios. It is easy to imagine how the approach can be adapted to personal protective equipment usage, medication and staffing needs. Let's see the details of how it all works. In order to understand how AnyLogic and Travelis are integrated together, let us first understand the entire end-to-end -end simulation. We'll talk a little bit more about what is the business case, how it solves the business case. Then let's understand what is the predictive component as part of the overall simulation. Once we understand that, we will talk about how H2O Travelis AI can be used to create a machine learning model for this use case. Once the once the experiment is complete in driverless AI, we can get a H2O Java Mojo, which can be deeply integrated into any, log any, any logic simulation uh, experiment. And we're gonna talk about how that is done. And then finally, we'll show the end-to-end -end completed code of the simulation. 
Okay, let me just load the simulation and then we can talk in detail about it. Here, we are simulating a hospital that operates in a county. The hospital is interested to understand what is the daily patient arrival rate of hospitalization that it can sustain given a certain number of hospital beds that are there. We also assume that the hospital is aware about the demographics of the county in which operates. Hence, it can draw the patients from the distribution of that population. As patients arrive at the hospital, we use their properties or attributes like age, the gender, whether they have any of these previous pre-existing conditions like cardiovascular disease or respiratory diseases to make a determination how severe their COVID infection could be and how long it would take them to recover. This prediction of the hospital duration stay from the travel CI model is then determined how long should the patient occupy the hospital bed and the bed gets allocated to the, to the patient. After the time duration elapses, the bed, the patient is then discharged and the bed is released back into the pool to be allocated to the next patient. Okay, now we are going to start the simulation and we'll keep the arrival rate at 10 patients per day. And what we are going to observe is where does the system stabilize? So right now our patients are arriving at 10 patients per day. About six days have elapsed and we see that around 75 80 beds are in use of the total 500 that are available you can see that as patients are coming in they are getting uh, the beds allocated at the same time there are uh, there are patients also getting discharged as about 100 and about 200 patients have passed through the system we are seeing the overall distribution of the days uh, that the patient the patients are getting hospitalized for we will we can we can also see that the system has currently stabilized somewhere around 130 to 130 beds in use if i increase the arrival rate from let's say 10 to somewhere around 20 or 25 uh, you would see that the beds will start the number of beds in use will start rising it will rise till the point where the system will stabilize again and that's when you would see that the, and that's how you would determine the number of beds you need in the hospital to sustain an arrival rate of 25 patients per day with an average hospitalization duration of 13.6 days. Uh, yeah, and we can see that the system has now stabilized. If I kind of uh, reduce the arrival rate again, you will see that the number of beds in use will start going down and the system will once again stabilize. So by manipulating the arrival rate and the total beds, one can really understand the amount of resources or hospital beds that are in need to meet a certain arrival rate of patients. In the simulation experiment that we just saw, the predictive component is the one that looks at the attributes of the patient and determines the duration of the hospital stay. To be able to create a machine learning model that can provide that prediction, we need to start with the training dataset. Here is an example training dataset that I had created. You can look at the properties of the patient are similar to the ones on which the decision is being made in the, in the simulation. And here we do have the actual stay duration information that is obtained from previous records. So let's use this training data set and create a machine learning model in driverless AI. Here is our driverless AI system. I have already started it on a system called Puddle. Puddle is our provisioning system on the cloud, which can start driverless AI instances there. Let me log in and with a user ID and password, and I'll land on the data set screen. You can see that I have already uploaded the training data set that we were showing. Uh, sometime back and you can see that the data set rows are similar to the ones that we just saw in the excel sheet there are multiple ways in which you can upload the data set or import the data set from either amazon or azure or hadoop not all of the data connectors are enabled out here but we have more than that, these let's train an experiment on this training data set 
to do that, I will go ahead and click on predict. I will give it an ex give a name to the experiment. Let's call it experiment nine, for example. I need to first select what is my target. What is it that I want to predict for in this data? And in our case, it is the stay days. So I select that. Dravel's AI automatically determines that it is a numeric information, it is a numeric data set, and hence it has determined it's a regression problem and has selected appropriate scorer for it. Since I want to complete the experiment quickly, I'm kind of reducing the accuracy and clicking the launch experiment. Let's wait and see how what happens. So here, Dravel's AI is starting with the experiment in some time. Yeah, you can notice that it, it determined that the ID column, which was C1, had unique values and Travel AI automatically dropped them because that value was not adding any information uh, in, in terms of predicting the outcome. Okay. Here we can see that Travel AI has started training the models. It is It will perform multiple iterations and will try to give you one of the best models that, that, that predicts the outcome. Okay, so some time has passed and the driverless AI experiment is now complete. We can see that driverless AI performed multiple iterations trying to improve the score of the model that it produces. It also determined which attributes have a higher predictive power in terms of determining the duration of the hospital stay. There are additional information that is also available which you can go through. Once the experiment is complete, you have the option of either downloading the Python scoring pipeline or the Java Mojo scoring pipeline. Since Analogic is a Java application and we want to embed the predictive model within an Analogic application, I decided to go with the Mojo scoring pipeline and that's, how, that's the main advantage of it. Click on this button to download the Java scoring pipeline. As you can see, the mojo.zip file is getting downloaded. Let's download it. All right. Okay, so far we have completed steps one, two, and three. Now we do have the Java mojo scoring pipeline. And now we are gonna see how to integrate it with any logic. With the mojo.zip downloaded, let's go ahead and extract it here. Once you extract the mojo.zip file, you will get this directory. Within the mojo directory, there are two main important files that we need. The pipeline.mojo, which is the machine learning model, and the mojo runtime, which understands how to execute this model. What I have already done is I have gone ahead and copied these two files within my AnyLogic application folder. This is my AnyLogic simulation folder. You would need a third file, which is the H2O driver CI license to be added out here. Okay. When the files are extracted and put into the AnyLogic uh, solution folder, and you open the AnyLogic solution in the AnyLogic editor, you will see that the three Travelers AI files are showing up out here in the resources others folder. Next, we need to go ahead and add the Mojo Java runtime as a dependency to the AnyLogic project. For that, click on the name of the project and look at the dependencies section. Out here, you have the capability to add any additional jars to this project. Let's add the, Let's add it. So I'm gonna select this, browse. I'm browsing to the location where I have my project. And here is the file that I put in. So I will select OK and finish. Now you can see that the Mojo runtime jar is available as a dependency to this project. After that, what we can do is go into your main program and go into the advanced Java section and import the various 
classes that are provided by the Java Mojo Runtime. Any Java class that is exposed by the Mojo Runtime is accessible to you throughout your AnyLogic application. This is the most important point that we need to consider when you are planning to integrate AnyLogic with any machine learning model. You can see that Drivers AI Mojos and AnyLogic can be seamlessly integrated with each other and are very tightly coupled. With the Mojo runtime classes being available in the AnyLogic simulator, we can then now go ahead and load, use these classes to instantiate or load the model from the pipeline.mojo file. For that, we first created a function called loadModel that accepts an argument called Mojo file. This argument is then basically read out here to create an object of the type model. We are loading this file from here. This function gets called when this variable is instantiated out here. With the model now loaded from pipeline.mojo and also instantiated as a variable, the state duration model, we'll go ahead and look how it is used for scoring a patient. For that, we create a function called getHospitalStay. The input arguments to this function are similar to what you see uh, as the properties of each patient. Out here, we first create a mojo frame and then create a row within it. We populate the row with all the attributes of the patient which are accepted as a function as arguments to this function. Then we add the row into the frame and finally call the transform function of the model to score the frame. What it would do is it would give you an output using which you can find out what is the stray duration for that particular patient that you passed in. So now you can see it does not take a lot of effort to integrate a driverless AI Java Mojo pipeline with an AnyLogic simulation solution. In fact, this is the main USP of this integrated solution. Just by copying three files and writing a few lines of code, you can convert your regular simulation into an AI or ML powered uh, simulation. I will now hand it over to Arash. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki and Heman. Having seen how easy it is to add a train ML model into the simulation, we are now reaching the end of this webinar. At this time, Nikki, Heman, and myself are ready to answer your questions in the live Q&A section. The first few questions I think is more relevant to the section that you covered, Nikki, so I will start with them. And um, we, will, we are very uh, interested to hear your take on these. Um, can you uh, elaborate on how the solution could be adapted to other use cases such as personal productive equipment or their optimization? I think you briefly mentioned that in your presentation, but I think somebody picked it on as they wanted to know more about your insights into it. Yes, so like in every area, uh, the same in healthcare, when it comes to optimization simulations with machine learning are actually great. So together with uh, the example we saw to, uh, today, uh, bed, uh, hospital bed capacity optimization, another use case uh, would be, uh, that uh, has been relevant is personal protective equipment, ventilators when it comes to COVID-19 related uh, needs. So. Uh, I, I, in my introduction, in my slides, I try to explain how these models uh, would uh, work in the real uh, world. So in this case, for example, it would be useful to simulate uh, COVID cases using a SIR model and uh, H2O actually has uh, good success using driverless to, simulate, uh, to, pre to predict uh, future cases, and uh, you can uh, check that in our web page, uh, H2O.ai. Uh, so simu uh, simulating uh, or predicting, simulating uh, the patients coming in and then perhaps uh, uh, evaluating the future needs based on that, on personal protective equipment, that could be useful, as I showed in my slide, uh, to avoid uh, paying the highest price and uh, efficient planning like that. Other use cases, uh, 
outside of hospitals, uh, for example, in a pharma industry, could be uh, delivery optimization, uh, stocking efficiently with the right uh, uh, medications, different areas based on uh, simulated need and uh, forecast uh, needs. Okay, perfect. So I think you kind of uh, touched on the second question, but if you if you want to add to it, so I think uh, um, you probably answered it. But are there other use cases outside hospital operations management in healthcare where AI simulations can be used for optimization? So yes, I already mentioned uh, the example of. Uh, uh, in the pharma industry, another in interesting use case uh, are as, uh, uh, where simulations are used for data generation is actually simulating cancer genomes, uh, simulating the processes that uh, create the genomes. And then th this is an active uh, effort, actually. I know a lot of people who are working on that and using this data to train uh, effective models uh, for cancer detection. That's why I find this uh, very interesting and a little different uh, use case than what we're discussing. Okay, perfect. Um, and the third question is still, still relevant to your expertise. What are the pain points in creating the AI model for these type of solutions or similar to what you discussed today? Yeah, so of course, uh, be care. A lot of care needs to be taken, uh, like in every case, uh, to ensure the machine learning model, the AI model, uh, is uh, performing as expected. In other words, it's not uh, overfit, all, all these things. So uh, a big uh, thing to ensure, especially if you want, uh, in, in these cases, since we are relying on predictions from the AI module that uh, Hammond showed, is uh, ensure model gener generalizability. And this is actually something uh, that uh, driverless uh, does out of the box uh, by creating uh, fault validation schemes to fit the type of data and the type of problem. Uh, at the same time, having said, said that this is a, as a more technical thing to, uh, to be aware of, uh, a lit, uh, another thing is uh, it's uh, of course uh, understood that in the AI model we are capturing uh, complex interactions between the various features. So being uh, sharply aware of the areas uh, in the feature space where uh, we don't have data, historical data for, as we perform the simulations uh, is very important in order to follow the results of the simulations and understand what they're telling us. Okay. Thank you so much. So I think uh, now I have to speak to him and think this question is more relevant to um, what he covered during the webinar. And the question is, is it possible to try H2O driver LS AI? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, while most of the H2O's products are open source, which you can, you know, you don't have to pay anything to even deploy it into production, like H2O, op, um, open source H2O, as well as uh, Sparkling Water. Driverless AI Contrary is a closed source application, and we do offer uh, like a 21 day free trial. So definitely you can get the full features of Driverless AI and try it for 21 days um, without, without incurring any costs. So if you want to do that, just go to our website, www.h2o.ai. On the top right, you will see free trial. Click on that button, give your email address, and, and you will get a 21-day license to use. And I think we have it on the screen on the, uh, the QR code and also the URL. So, And actually, the next question is more to me, and the answer is actually on the screen. But the question is, does any logic has a free version to try the example shown in the webinar? So um, and this, and there is another relevant question that is, where can I find the example model? For the example model that Heyman showed uh, during uh, the webinar, you can find it in the URL that is in the center of the screen. So we have a landing page uh, for H2O AI that you can get access to their platform. And also we have two example models, including the hospital capacity model that Heyman um, just showed. So this is what you are seeing on your screen. So uh, yeah, so you get some information and there are two example models. Uh, the one on the left is the one that Hemant showed and we have another one product delivery, which is a supply chain related example that showcases the incorporation of an ML model into simulation. So both of them are 
accessible here. You can click on download and download the entire uh, model uh, source code and the, uh, the Mojo pipeline that is trained for it. Um, and also, the uh, back to the question, AnyLogic also has a free version. So if you go to anylogic.com uh, slash download, um, you will find uh, three versions of AnyLogic there. Um, the personal learning edition is a free version that has some limitation, but definitely works with the example models that we showcased today. If you're a professional that you're trying to test any logic for like a um, real project, so I suggest you to download the professional version, which is the they have the red icon, and um, you can activate it for 30 days, similar to what Driver AS uh, actually provides. So you can download it and use it for that amount of time. And if you need uh, an extension or like more information about it, you can actually contact us about this. Um, so I think I've I've covered um, the questions that we had a chance to compi compile the before the, um, um, when we reach to the Q&A section. Uh, so there, I'm sure there are more that Tyler is uh, working on. We make sure that um, we will answer all of them in the follow-up material that you will receive right after this uh, uh, webinar, hopefully by the end of this week. Um, is there anything else from you, Heman or Nikki that you wanted to talk about? Okay, so I think we covered everything. Okay, perfect. So thank you again for joining us for this webinar. We really appreciate it. I personally learned a lot from uh, what you've shown. Um, um, one other thing, just to put emphasis on it and make sure that you're aware of this, that you will get the supplemental material that has the video recording, all the URLs, the models, everything that you've seen here. So if you ha didn't have a chance to write them down or you missed something, you will get everything you need to. Um, right after this webinar finishes, you get a very short survey. So please help us uh, by giving your feedback. It is highly valuable for us and important to tailor the future um, webinars toward your specific needs. Um, yeah, I think we reached the end of the webinar. Thank you again for your time today. Uh, be safe and have a great uh, rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.